May the Lord bless you and keep you. Just letting you know, this is a religious podcast. No, that's totally fine. We might say some crazy, crazy stuff. No, How do you honestly, get... I, a couple months ago, I started going into opening up my relationship with God. So, oh, God yeah. bless you. Are you kidding? I grew up Catholic my whole life, and then when I turned 18, I became like atheist and stuff like that. And yeah. I'm 34, and because of all the evil in the world, I just had to go toward the light. I have I show bumps yeah. all over my you. body. Yeah. I am so happy thank for you, you and Jesus. so proud of you. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, it's, it was one of those things where for months, it felt like he was just trying to talk to me. Yeah, yeah. And then one day, I was just like, because you know, Catholicism, you ask. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and one day I was just like, what's up, God? And I just felt the love in my heart. And I do a podcast. I'm so proud really of you. Incredible. And I know it's so hard out here. And it's yes. really, you know, and, and but just Very stay hard. on course because everyone is going to try yeah. to, especially right now that you're coming back into the faith, you're going to experience a lot of setbacks and, you know, discouragement, but just keep going. Yeah. It's been, and I used to work in Hollywood. I know you're an actress. So yeah. It's like one of those things where I work in Hollywood and I was like, it's so bad. Trust and me. That, yeah, so. we, that's all we talk about on here is how dark it is. And it's really weird out here. And it's we scary. have to be careful. Yeah. Mute. And we got to do an introduction today. We can't play these games. We got to say hi, Angela Ariel. Ready? Set. Go. go. Hi, hi, guys. Gigi. Hi, guys. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start doing an introduction because we never do. My name is Angela. And my name is Arielle, but I prefer to be called Ari. We are the hosts of Girls Gone Bible. This is a faith-based podcast. We talk a lot about Jesus and the Bible and how much we love him and... Jesus for degenerates, basically. Mm -hmm. Talk about personal experiences and yeah. what we've been through and how we found God and how he's really changed our life. Yeah. So. So. Hi. Hi. What's, what's up? up? How are you feeling today? You know, I feel really good. Honestly. And you know what else? Huh. I'm feeling just so grateful for our friendship. Me too. Like, I'll just catch them. I've been catching, because we've been, um, if you guys don't know, we just came back from Texas. We did Janine's podcast, Happy and Healthy. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. We met with Maddie Pruitt, and they are just the most incredible girls. We have built this friendship in, like, the matter of 48 hours. Truly. It was really beautiful. Um, but I just, the whole time I was with you, I just kept looking at you. Just I, I swear, in my head, I just kept saying, I am so so lucky to have you as my best friend. The past like five days, we w are looking at each other randomly going, what would I do, do without, without you? you? <laughs> what would I do without you? Everyone is talking about how like you need community, you need community and you do. It's really important and we're looking for some good. We have good community. Yeah. But like we always look at each other like my community. It's just us. <laughs> the, bl <laughs> the blind leading the blind. I love you so much. I really love you so much. I had another moment where I was just looking at you being like, I'm so glad that we come from where we come from. Me too. You know, yeah. I used to feel a lot of shame being like, oh, I'm not Christian enough or I'm not this, I'm not that. But no, I am so lucky. You should be. How I grew up. You should be because you, from every painful or negative experience the opposite positive has come out of it for you mm -hmm. every bad thing that you've ever experienced has given you like the best qualities about you you are the most selfless giving person I've ever met in my life you would give me your last dollar like you will give the shirt off your back you Same are with you sister I, I just, I think too, because of the things you've been through, you have a compassion and empathy for other people that others might not have had they not been through Well, I feel something the, same, the same thing with you. Thank you. We're the same person. We're the Thank same you. person. Thank you. Um, I'm like, I have a peace in my heart mm. that mm. I just want to thank the Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who literally provides a way of escape in any negative situation and he is faithful and he comes through and he cleans up messes and mm -hmm. he's just like 
I don't know. I'm just, it is well with my soul all day today. I keep looking at Ari going, it is well with my soul. <laughs> he truly works all things out for the greater good. So whatever you're stressing out about, you guys, just keep keep declaring that over yourself. Mm -hmm. He works everything out for the greater good, even if you're in a hard season, a waiting season, whatever you're in. Yeah. He's, he's working everything out for the greater of your good. He's so good. He's so good. So today, so when this is released, this is coming out Friday. So this is going to be a couple of days. I think it's the 27th. A couple of days before Halloween. Now. Yeah, can we just see what's in that bag? Come yes, on. First, she I got, got, she's no, always it's, got something up her sleeve. I, I got us outfits. <laughs> I got us outfits, but first I just want to say <laughs> Halloween is a very controversial topic. We're going to get into it. We have a lot of, a lot to go over, a lot of opinions, questions, a lot to go over. Now, we'll get into dressing up and if that's okay. However, I did get a couple of pieces of costumes. Okay, what did you get? Okay, hang on, hang on. Don't she look. was so excited this morning. She said, can we go to the party store? You can wait in the car. And then she wouldn't I made her wait in the car. <laughs> okay, hang on. I hope it's okay. candy. It is. Are you it looking? Is? Are you looking? No. Okay. Okay, so this is my <laughs> costume. <laughs> is that for a child? Probably. <laughs> what did you get me, Angela? This is my costume. No, I got you something cute. Hang on. Did, did this look good? Yeah. Okay. That and does then, look really cute. Does it? Thank is you. Is it a cow or a cat? It's a cat. A cat. A cat. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then I got you. Angela! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I got you again. <laughs> I got Why you cat ears. All right, are we gonna wear this the whole episode? I don't think so. You yeah. actually look so cute. <laughs> Let's take a <laughs> Let's every it. time, every time one of us stumbles put, on our words, put we put on the clown nose. <laughs> yes. Can we do that? <laughs> Let me see that. <laughs> every time I see this, <laughs> no, <laughs> this truly has been me all year. No. Okay. Okay. We can't read the Bible with this on our heads. All right. Fine. Take it off, just maybe f later for okay, the festivities. Okay, cool. I can. This is cool, though. <laughs> okay, you oh, cool, dog. Dog. <laughs> Give me a sip of that. <laughs> I'm this flying. Is the best Please, Angela. Can okay, I have I'll a relax. No, really. What? I need to talk to you for a what, minute. What? 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 I'm not dealing with you drinking the whole one of these. I'm not going to drink a whole one. I just had a couple sips. That's I'll relax. It. I'm going to put it or keep it over here. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, please. One more sip and that's it. And then okay, put it away. Okay, okay. I am putting it away. I already Mom. see the crazies in your eyes. The crazies in my eyes. So Thanks. we don't like to typically read from the Bible. I mean, <laughs> we don't typically like to read <laughs> from the, the phone. Clown nose? <laughs> <laughs> we typically don't read from the phone. We like to read from the actual Bible. But today is a really important day. Um, of scripture, and I want I wanted to read. We read from New King James version, but I wanted to read from an easier version, not because I don't think you guys can handle NKGV. Because we can't. No, because I just I just want everyone to follow along and and be really. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Imitate me again and watch what happens. I'm sorry. I'm really. Hey. I I'm, have to get the hair. Come here. Hurry up. Uh, this is why you need to buy hairspray. Well, then you. I, did you just pull out my hair? Just... How could she? All right. So, yeah, so the first, <clears throat> there's so much controversy around Halloween, and we just, we want to shed some light and give people a little bit of a guideline as to what is right and what is wrong, and it's hard because everybody has a different opinion because Halloween is not explicitly um, mentioned in the Bible. However, there's a lot in Scripture that will allude to a pretty dark night like Halloween and yeah. rituals and darkness and stuff like that. So let's start with, are you take it off? We're going to be in Ephesians chapter five. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a full life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world." 
Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do, for Mm -hmm. once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. Mm. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret, but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. That's it. This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Living by the Spirit's power. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and Hymns, hymns, and hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord in your hearts, and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. For, uh, an outline like this. So <clears throat> let's go through this a little bit, what we just read. I mean, this is, I feel like this is the most perfect thing we could read mm-hmm. on to talk about a topic as dark as Halloween. So God says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. We're going to talk a lot about that today, Mm -hmm. light versus darkness. Walk as children of light and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, darkness, but rather expose them. It's funny because... I actually was kind of going to bat with you a little bit. And I said, let's let's have a little debate. Because I really didn't understand I, I, the full meaning of Halloween. Yeah. But when you start to read the scripture, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Because it is such darkness, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so then as I'm studying all this this week, I'm like, I don't know if I can go to bat with her. <laughs> I, no, it's, no, see, I mean, I... I haven't celebrated Halloween. I have celebrated Halloween every year of my life until until three years ago, maybe. Maybe, yeah, three years ago was about the last time because I had conviction that I was like, this is not my holiday. And I didn't even know exactly. I wasn't even, I didn't even know what scripture said about it. I just knew, I felt that like, this is not right. Whatever happens, especially in LA, like the parties and what happens and the outfits and every, it's just, I don't like what we're celebrating. It's not light. What was your... uh your costume. You know what? I don't really appreciate you bringing up my past and me. Okay. God says that Come I'm a new it. creation. <laughs> Come on. I've been made new in Christ and it's okay that I was dirty Christina Aguilera. <laughs> I rebuke it. I repent and I'm sorry, Jesus. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> oh man. What was my worst one? I, we're not glorifying this at we're all. We're not glorifying this. I honestly was always really cute on my Halloween costumes. I've been a you were I've a been cheerleader. Li- I've been living out my glory days for the past three <laughs> years, being a cheerleader. And I was a German girl too. A German girl. Like, you know, the oh, ge- I've seen that outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah see, <clears throat> unfortunately, Ari and I have spent a lot of our lives living in darkness. <laughs> you should, not, you should, yes. Not knowing the truth and not knowing the truth of, first of all, not even that Halloween is bad, but you just should dress modestly. And there is a way to go about buying clothes that you should put on your body. And a lot goes into it. And we were really blind to that for a long time. Yeah. Um, More so you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you've been great. Or you've never worn a bad outfit in your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways. But, let's okay, can I just read this because yes. this is so intriguing to me because truthfully I did not really understand yeah. Halloween until studying it. Go ahead. Okay. So, I was doing my research. Okay, the name Halloween traces back to what is it? Ca- ca- Catholicism? Where is, is that? that how you pronounce Catholicism. it? Catholicism. Okay. The name Halloween traces back to Catholic Cath- <laughs> Catholicism. Give me up. 
good. The name Halloween Trace is <laughs> The name Halloween traces back to Catholicism. <laughs> okay, you said them. <laughs> name Halloween traces back to Catholicism. I can't say it, Angela. Catholi Catholicism. Yes. The yes, name yes. Halloween traces back to Catholicism. Halloween comes from the two words of hollow, which means holy person, and een, which is supposed to mean Eve. Hollow refers to the holy people or the saints celebrated within the Catholic Church on All Saints Day, which occurs on November 1st. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Yeah, I knew that it means... Um, the Halloween is short for All Hallows Eve, and it, Halloween is the evening vigil before All Saints Day, which is a religious holiday honoring Christian martyrs, which we got a question that said, does it, the fact that it originally started as the opposite of All Saints Day give you pause? And the answer is yes. It, the enemy is a copycat and he he can't do anything original. He can't do anything. There's nothing new under the sun. He can't do anything that God hasn't done first. So he takes whatever, that's why they call him the copycat. He takes whatever God has done and then he perverts it and he makes it dark and weird. So like, just like God has an army of angels, Satan has an army of demons. So we have All Saints Day. He created Halloween or what a, a, All Hallows Eve, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. In ancient times, a Celtic festival called Samhain, Samhain, oh, yeah. right, marked the end of the harvest and the coming of winter, a time when the veil between the living and the dead was believed to be especially thin, October 31st to November 1st. Um, apparently during this time, people would dress up as evil spirits to blend in with the actual evil spirits so they wouldn't get attacked by them. Mm. And that's where the whole phenomenon of like dressing up actually came from. So it has pagan roots. It's a pagan holiday and it is just not good. <laughs> it's really not good. I mean, tr I mean, we just put on cat ears. So it's, it's a little bit hard because we're still a bit opinionated and we really try on Girls Gone Bible to be biblically correct and factual but it's like we're a lot of this is like an opinionated ba opinion based conversation yeah because it doesn't say exactly in the bible about halloween yeah it just ha it says don't partake in any evil works don't hang out with these people don't do what they do you guys we are so happy about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor of this video is BetterHelp. As you guys know, BetterHelp played a huge, huge role in my journey, in my healing journey. And um, it's just BetterHelp, I can't even rave enough about it. Therapy is crucial if you're going through things or if you just need to talk something out with, with a therapist. And what I love about BetterHelp is that you can go in and really customize exactly what kind of therapist you want. And it's just, it's, I can't even say it enough mm -hmm. how amazing BetterHelp is. Yeah, BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be hard, and the right therapist might not be in your area. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even just through messaging if you prefer that. Whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. To get started, go to betterhelp.com slash girlsgonebible to fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. BetterHelp can match you to over 30,000 therapists in their network. And if the therapist you're first match with doesn't feel like the right fit, which a lot of the times is very common when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. People spend hours in the gym every week, so why not give your mind the same kind of attention? Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. If you think you would benefit from therapy, I encourage you guys to click the link. It's betterhelp.com slash girlsgonebible. Clicking the link does help our channel, but I really, really, again, encourage you guys to go get therapy with BetterHelp. It's the easiest, it is the most efficient, and it's so beneficial to your life. And we at Girls Gone Bible really, really encourage you. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. It's crazy because growing up, that was one of my favorite. I loved I know. Halloween. My, I know. my mom dressing me up, going trick or treating with all my friends, you know, even up to, I, I don't think I dressed up last year, but a couple years ago, just getting dressed up, going to Halloween parties, yeah. like things like that. I loved it. It was always so fun for me, you know? I know. And I, here's what I think. I mean, I, 
when I, f- I only found this out yesterday that people would dress up as evil spirits to blend in with them. Cause then that freaked me out even more because honestly, up until now, I thought it's okay to like dress up and take a photo. I don't like the idea of going to a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. I just think that there's too much darkness. The veil between the living and the dead is supposedly open. I just don't think, I think it's good to go to bed early that night and wake up the next morning. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. I just, I don't like the ritual of going out and getting drunk and celebrating darkness like that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I I hear you on that. I have a little bit of a different take on that. I mean, after studying really what Halloween is and all the witchcraft, it's one of the biggest days of the year with witchcraft and stuff. It it really does freak me out because I, witchcraft just, ugh. But um, I think you do. Ev- you can do everything in a tasteful way, right? Mm-hmm. We have a group of friends, and we're not. We're honoring God by the way we dress. And you know, you have a, a, a party with your friends, and you, and you dr- you know have some fun. I, I don't know. I just think I don't see the harm in it. I, that's that's just my personal opinion. If yeah. you, I don't think you should be dressing up as demons and devils oh, with blood not. coming down your chin and going to Hollywood parties. No, I would say absolutely not. But if you're having just a fun little party with friends and let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about scary stuff. Let's talk about because I just had to go into a Halloween shop and I will literally never go in one again. It was so scary. The scary mask, the scary faces, the blood, the death. This is the issue. Is anything because I do agree. I think I think personally that you can dress up in a costume, put on some ears and some do whatever you want and then be surrounded by people who aren't worshiping the devil and who aren't partaking in weird stuff or doing rituals or witchcraft, any of that stuff. You know what I mean? I think I do. I do think that you and I can have a couple people over and wear costumes and we're not celebrating the devil or anything like that. Now, when it comes to scary stuff and like gory stuff, I don't believe we're so big on symbolism and we're so big on like we won't even wear like a T-shirt with a skull on it. Skulls and a lot of people, there's a lot of debate about skulls because people think, well, skulls, it's just the human body. Skulls represent death and Jesus represents life. And so we have life through Jesus. We don't need to be glorifying death. We don't need to be glorifying evil and darkness. And so that's where I really draw the line hard. And there, there is no opinion in that. Like you cannot be dressing up as anything scary, anything demonic, anything dark. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with you on that. Um, yeah, we have to live in the light, not the darkness. Yeah. Yeah symbolism is huge and I and it's we see it everywhere Angela and I you know we live in LA and we'll be driving and I'm not kidding you on every single bus on every single sign everywhere is that um, exorcist movie is the exorcist movie everywhere we look driving me nuts it's awful I used to love horror movies. Did yeah. you did you like horror movies growing I, up? I love them. I've been in them. I've been I really yeah. am having a lot of revelation. Same. Same. Over the past I, I, year. I, I I can't believe it how much I was living in darkness. I used to live for horror movies. Me too. You know what I do love though? Huh. I love to watch on Halloween. Huh. Hocus Pocus. Well, John Ramirez, I just watched a video of him. Hocus Pocus is all witchcraft. Yeah, I know it is. That I used loved, to be my favorite you know, movie. I just heard John Ramirez say even the word hocus pocus is a spell. Yeah. Even just saying it, hocus pocus is like tying ourselves to whatever like we're calling in. Mm-hmm. We're like coming into agreement with whatever dark spirit is attached to that. Yeah. Um, which is insane. And I know it's a lot. And especially if you're a new Christian, this is uh, like it's <laughs> it's just really difficult to all take in. But it's real and like you can get attached to these dark spirits really easily since we are talking about evil and darkness we wanted to touch on a very heavy subject which is the terror that's going on in israel we knew that today was the day because we couldn't have any more episodes not talking about what's going on um this is a really touchy subject politically driven when it should only be emotionally driven because it's not about politics this is about innocent people dying yeah and as christians we are to stand with israel there are people getting brutally murdered kidnapped uh, children and mothers getting raped it is pure evil evil and 
the truth is that Hamas is a terrorist organization. Hamas is the ultimate evil, and there is no standing by them. There is no defending them. Israel has the right to protect themselves. Yeah, they want an elimination of the people, and that's pure evil. We have a lot to say about it. We are not going to just speak, you know, off the cuff. We have some things written down that we really want to that we want to go through. Over 250 Israelis reported dead and 1,500 injured, showcasing the human cost of the attacks. The truth is that Hamas is targeting civilian areas. This is a war where Israel must defend itself against Iran. Iran put Hamas on a suicide mission to prevent the emerging USA-Sunni Israel alliance. And our mission must be to destroy the entirety of Hamas leadership and all of its capabilities. The truth is that Israel's defensive measures are a necessary step to protect its citizens and neutralize threats. Hamas is designated as a terrorist organization by many countries and international bodies due to its radical views and continuous engagement in violent activities. This designation underscores the threat that it poses not just to Israel, but to regional peace and stability. Religious groups have organized prayer vigils and drives to provide support to the victims and their families, which is incredible. And many churches have called for peace and humanitarian support for the affected regions. It says in Exodus 22, 2-3, If a thief is caught breaking in at night and is struck by a fatal blow, the defender is not guilty of bloodshed. And Psalm 25:22 says, "Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles." You guys, this is such a heavy thing and there's so much controversy around it, but all that we know is that this should not be a political topic. This is not about religion, no. it's not about race, it's not about where you were born. It is about innocent lives being lost, tortured. It is the highest form of evil and I pray in the name of Jesus that every innocent person on every side from every country from every place any innocent person will be delivered from this horror that God would provide a way of escape for everybody involved in this and that he will bring reconciliation and peace to the situation because it is devastating and heartbreaking it, it is it's I can't, I mean, we see it on the news and we're watching it, but but to just, I can't even imagine what these families are going through, their kids and their, their wives getting stolen. And it's, it's, it is just vile. And we need to just keep praying every single day for yeah. these people. Yeah. And I think what else is really important is that we really need to be careful where we are getting our information from and the sources that we're receiving this information there's a lot of really dangerous violent ideologies being spread and I really say encourage you to take care of your mind and be careful because there are a lot of lies being told and the truth is that God loves Israel yeah those are his people those are his people and they and will be delivered yeah. and freed in yeah. Jesus name Jesus name have you ever had like a supernatural dark encounter I was thinking about that actually a lot, thinking, yes, I have never had, I can't say I've ever had like a true, I don't know, like supernatural encounter with a demon that, you know, like a lot of people do. What I have had is when I was in college, so after I got out of high school and I went to college, I was 18 years old and I was really close to God at that time. I would say my prayers every night before I went to sleep. I would talk to God all day and I would pray in our father, a hail Mary and a glory be every single night. I remember I was sitting in my bed. I had a, I had a roommate at the time. I would be laying in my bed, looking out the window. And do you know what I would see in mm -hmm. my head? I would see like from the street lights, I would see two red eyes as street lights, but I would see them as red eyes. And in Whoa. my mind, I thought it was the devil. And the devil, every single night, every single night, when I would start to pray, whoosh, like fear all throughout my body. I had no idea what the enemy was. I didn't know what spiritual warfare was. He wanted me to stop praying and it worked. I Whoa. stopped praying Whoa. because every time I prayed, I got scared and I didn't want to have that scary feeling. And every time I prayed, I would see the two eyes outside. They were just street lights, but he was coming into my mind and giving me thoughts that it was the enemy. And so for a little while, I thought the devil, 
I didn't even know anything scripturally about the enemy. I just knew that there was a devil. Yeah. And that's what the devil does, though. He wants two things, and we know this. He wants to either make you think he doesn't exist or that he has way more power than he does. And for a long time, he made me feel like he had way more power than he did. And so for a long time, I stopped praying. And by the way, that's the time in my life where I started to get into serious trouble and, like, not be well. Wow. Yeah. So how did, how did you break it? Honestly, I don't know. Just a couple years later when I stopped being, I just stopped being, when I realized, uh, Socrates, when mm. I realized he would tell me about spiritual warfare and the enemy and yeah. how he influences our thoughts. But what about we you? You have to be so careful, you guys. Have you um, had one? I th I, when I think about it, I think how the enemy is ju has just been in my mind and the thoughts that he the, the seeds that he plants in my mind and how he can attack my mind. and my, So subtle. My, yeah, my compulsive thoughts. That's yeah. the enemy. Yeah. Telling me I'm not good enough, I'm unwanted, I'm not, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I would say there was a time where I was so vulnerable and at this time, like, my all my social media pages were just getting flooded with tarot readers. And when you're in such a vulnerable place, that's when the enemy attacks, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and also when you're vulnerable, you will be like, oh, what is it? You're, you're, you just want, you want to like grovel answers. at something. Yeah, you want answers. And so my For You pages were flooded with tarot re readers, which by the way, I can't even believe how many tarot readers there are. I know. I mean, have you it's all, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I click not interested every time it comes up, but yeah, it's real. They're coming after you. You do not let the enemy, the phone is such a blessing and it's literally such a curse at the same time. You have to be True. so careful what you're taking in. If you see one of those tarot things, you go past it fast. Cause it will come in. Yeah. And so then I, okay. So then when I, um, Two times in like two weeks, I was I had gotten massages. Well, both times the massage therapists were mediums, and they told me, and they started reading about my my Without life. Without your permission? Yes. Yeah. They said, "Hey, I I, I don't want to freak you out, but I see this," and they started telling me about my future, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I, it was crazy. And, and then and then you had another experience where your friend went to one, and what happened? This is all during mm -hmm. the same time in one of the worst times of your life. Yes. And then <laughs> my girlfriend goes to a tarot reader. This is, this is yeah, recently. And um, she gets a reading and the tarot reader flips over a card and it said my name on it. And that's what happens when you're so close to God. Yeah. The devil wants to get in. So. Um, Did you tell your friend that she should not go to a tarot reader? Yeah, and she told me to shut up. <laughs> it's okay. We'll pray. <laughs> But I, yeah, no, I used to go to mediums and I used to, I used to get, buy into that stuff and it is nothing but evil. And I was studying it really hard this past week because sometimes what they've said to me has actually came true. Yeah. And so, and I think a lot of people go through that where they're like, yeah, but they, they told me everything and it's really come true. Well, yeah, because the enemy, the enemy hears that he gets into that tarot reader's mind and then they do make it come true. Uh, well, yes, exactly. So the enemy has, he is not all seeing and all knowing and all powerful like yeah. God, but he does have power right he does know things he has spent his whole life he studies us he that's how he knows our weaknesses he knows our life he knows our weaknesses he knows what we want and what we desire and so he will give all that information to the tarot reader like he will all of that they when it so I, tr I believe everybody has gifts and I believe that people who are like tarot readers mm -hmm. and, and people who do witchcraft, they probably do have divine gifts. They do have gifts of prophecy or gifts of healing or this stuff, but they're not getting their power from the one true source, we, Jesus, that we should be getting it from. They are not getting from it from enemy. Yeshua, Yahweh. Like they are getting their power from the devil. It's true. I don't care how crazy that sounds. No, it's, it's the, the truth. truth. And like you, the devil can make incredible things happen, but it always comes at a price. 
It's never that when when you make a deal with the devil, he always comes knocking. That's why it's not worth it because God's blessings are true and they're good and they are, you don't have to repay God in any way. I know a medium and her life is such misery and mm. she and she go, she is in such darkness. Are you kidding? She's a good person though, yeah. but she is in such darkness. And when I was listening to Johnny Ramirez, when he was studying all the satanic, um, rituals and stuff. Yeah. Um, how how miserable and dark he was, and it wasn't until he found Jesus when he just saw the light and he was free. Yeah. You know. This is a good time. Let's play that clip. So we're about to play a clip. It's John Ramirez. He is the ex Satanist. He's like the head of the Church of Satan, right? Yeah. Or, or yeah. someone really high up. He he uh, like baptized his daughter to the devil when she was eleven. I mean, he was deep, deep, really, really scary. And now he's a pastor. So we'll play that clip. Tell us a little bit about where you were in relation to Satanism and worshiping the devil. Well, at 25 years, uh, eight years old, boy, little boy, eight years old, demon church, learned being trained by high ranked devil worship with warlock and spiritual witches, turning me to uh, know how to take over territory, demon demonic contract, demon different demon territory, demons, principalities, first, second heaven. I was being trained all the way to the age of 35, sold my soul to the devil, got married on Halloween, had a demonic wedding on Halloween. I baptized my daughter to the dark side at the age of 11. So that was my whole entire life. I mean, I, I breathed, ate, and slept witchcraft. You're pretty um, discouraged that you see Christians celebrating Halloween. Why? I, 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 I don't know how you can cheat on God. I don't know how you can cheat on the Lord Jesus Christ because I don't see Satan as coming on Good Friday and coming and hanging out with us, right? You know, I got married on Halloween, I had a demonic wedding. Why would you put your kids, your family, why would you put your purpose, your destiny, why would you put your whole eternity in a demonic altar? But people say, it's just fun, candy, kids are having costumes on. And well, but you but say it, it's it, much more. It, 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 the candy, you know, I, 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 shared, I, I never shared this before, but this candy, people from different walks of life pray over these candies. And on top of that, I'm Tom Levain said, out of his mouth, you know, he he, he used to he was, he was the ruler of the Church of Satan, mm -hmm. right? Out of his mouth, he said, "I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their child to celebrate Halloween one time a year, the Devil's Holiday." So he said a couple of things in there. He said, "I don't know how you can cheat on God. I don't see Satanists coming out on Good Friday to celebrate with us." He's talking about Halloween. He's really serious about it. Like, he don't is. even go out. Johnny Ramirez also got married when on Halloween because it's the biggest witchcraft. It's the largest night. It's the, it's the most popular night for witchcraft yeah. of the year. Yeah. Um, yeah. People that, that, st people that study witchcraft, it's Halloween is like our Christmas. Yeah. It's yeah. just such a big deal. I can't believe it. I know. I know. Okay. This is something that I want us to talk about. Um, in First Thessalonians 5.22, it says, abstain from every yes. form of evil. I want to talk a little bit about darkness and about <clears throat> there is like, you know, there are trends in life and there are trends and they come and they go. At one point, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. Drinking each other's blood. Yes, created a trend and influenced thousands of thousands, if not millions of kids, teenagers, young adults to think that darkness is cool. Sorry. There's not many things that make my blood boil, but when I look at them, I don't care. I don't want to talk negatively, but when I watch them, I, I really do get sick to my stomach. Sick to my stomach. Sick to my stomach. The message that they're putting out and how much influence they have truly makes me sick. Me too. And it when you don't know, you don't know. And a lot of people can be completely under demonic oppression and have no idea. And that is usually the case. I don't think that a lot of people like want to do bad. I don't think a lot of people want to send thousands of people following them to hell by their behavior and their influence. But I just think she's like, you know, we just we take a little like spoonful and like drink each other's blood. What do they do? When did they did that when they got married or are they do, are randomly they sucking each other's blood like vampires <laughs> all the time? What are I they don't, doing? I don't know. I think it was one time she said it was for ritual purposes only. Let me tell you guys this. The enemy is going to 
he has desensitized us so much to stuff like this so that we, while it is really gross and bad, people also are like, nah, whatever. It's real. Let me tell you, in the spiritual realm, I know we're so annoyingly spiritual, but it, it's all real. In the spiritual realm, blood sacrifice is the highest and most powerful form of ritual you can do. That's why Jesus had to come and be crucified. Blood had to be shed to atone for our sins. He is the blameless, spotless lamb of God. Jesus had to die for our sins with his blood. That's why through his blood, that's why we plead his blood over our lives. Blood is powerful and it's real. And so doing blood rituals with people, random people, like it is so unbelievably wrong and scary and evil. It is evil. evil. It is. Yeah. And, um, and you have to be, you know what, you know what I say in my prayers Mm -hmm. also, because there is so much, the the truth of the matter is, is we are living in a very dark world, Yeah. but there is so much light with Jesus. And anytime in my prayers, I always say, I break any witchcraft Mm. formed against me because you don't know what people are doing who's against you. So you make sure that in your, you don't have to say it every time, but I do make sure to do that because I had a lot of darkness around me for a very long time. And so I I just say, I I say, Jesus, I break any witchcraft around me. I want to say one more thing about Johnny Ramirez because I really did learn a lot about him. He, when he found Jesus, he had a lot of people coming after him. The interviewer said, well, what did you do to break it? And he said, it took about 10 days, but all I had to do was say Jesus out loud. Do you know how powerful that is? Just to say Jesus's name out loud and the demons flee, they go away. Of course they do. That's all you have to do. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I do it all day long. I'm covered by By the the blood blood of of Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. He will break anything off of you. Every, there is not one piece of witchcraft that can have control over you. If you're aware though, a lot of us are walking around with generational curses, witchcraft, a lot of weapons formed against us that are prospering because we don't know. We don't know how to pray over it. Yeah. And so I encourage you guys to pray, pray against witchcraft. We should really honestly do a witchcraft prayer. Yeah. Why don't you want to pull it up? Yeah. Keep talking. Um, should we... <sighs> Let me just read over a couple of the questions and see if you think we covered them all. Is it a sin to celebrate and dress up? What does Halloween actually mean? Is it okay to go trick-or-treating and dress up? Is it a satanic holiday? Does it matter if you just dress up for fun and not participate in other Halloween traditions? Yeah, well, like I said earlier, we can't sit here and tell you, oh, you know, no, you can't celebrate Halloween. You can't go to a party with your friends. You can't dress up. But let's look at the facts of it. Like it says, abstain from every form of evil. So do you want to go out wearing blood all dripping down your face and and dressing demonic? No. We want to always honor life. Yes. I think that personal conviction is huge. I think that when you are honest with God, like truly honest, and not just having an opinion formed already and then bringing it to him and being like, thanks, Jesus, for confirming this when he Mm. didn't actually. I think being humble and asking God, seeking his advice and his, what the truth is in Jesus, because we all, the truth is we all have different convictions. And I think that that's the only way to go about it. You ask God for discernment for you, your family. Yeah. If it's something that convicts you, then, then don't do it. Yeah, I do. Honestly, what convicts me? I'll be honest. Like Taking a photo in an outfit at home and then posting it just because I it's I love because it's just fun to dress up as something, I think that's okay. Halloween night, I'm not leaving my house. Yeah. Halloween night, I'm watching the Passion of the Christ at home <laughs> with you, and we're gonna like sit and pray. Like I do believe that weird stuff happens at night. It is the night of the most witchcraft ever. There's something in the air. I really do think because when I have my kids, I want to dress them pretty little pumpkin. Yeah. But so it's 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 a tough one, but you you pray about it and you do what what you feel, what God tells you, what convicts you. Yeah. And like and it's also like partaking in other activities. Like, can you carve pumpkins? Yeah, you can carve pumpkins. Oh, that's the best. Uh, yeah, carve pumpkins. Go to a pumpkin patch. Like, I just want you to know that Jesus is the light. He is the way, the truth, the life. And he is the light 
And in Jesus, you will be in light. In darkness, it says that we must expose the darkness. Do yeah. not partake in it. Yeah. It's not cool. I have a really good prayer here if you guys want to say it with me. Um, I pray this in the name of Jesus. I'll put it on the screen, but I want you guys to say it with me. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, anyone under the sound of my voice, this prayer it goes to them as well. Heavenly Father, I bow in worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as my protection during this time of prayer. I bind all principalities, powers of the air, wickedness in high places. I bind every soldier of the enemy and cast them out of my heart, home, spirit, and mind. In the name of Jesus, I command Satan to leave my presence with all his demons in the power of Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I, bra I bind and break witchcraft, mind-bending spirits, spirits that block and bind well. Mm. I bind and break all rebellion, rejection, anger, hatred, bitterness, malice, slander, resentment, pride, dissension, distraction, perversion, and deception. In the name of Jesus, I bind and break the spirits of fear, greed, addiction, drugs, and alcohol. I repent of all evil practice. I repent of all rebellion, and I ask to be covered in the wings of my Heavenly Father and in the the blood of Christ Jesus. Lord, please wash away my iniquities and make me white as snow. Heavenly Father, I humbly ask that you would quicken me. Show me the way that Satan is deceiving me. Show me how I am deceiving myself and where I'm believing falsehoods instead of in you. Reveal to me, Jesus, how he is hindering my spiritual walk and how he is tempting me. Please show me where he is counterfeiting and distorting the truth in my life. I claim in every way Jesus' victory over all satanic forces active in my life. I reject these forces, and I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving, glory, and praise. Amen. That was so good. That was good. And I really do want to say one more yeah. thing. I mean, so, some of you guys, including us, we've been there, have been doing things that maybe aren't honoring God or you haven't been doing the best. But let me just tell you that God is the only one who truly sees our hearts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He sees our hearts and he is right there to meet you right where you are. And it is stronger than any power of darkness. Okay, so understand, do not beat yourself up and just let it out to him. Yeah, He's going to be right there to meet you and you just say, Jesus, I need your help. Get me out of this darkness. Mm -hmm. Help me. Mm -hmm. And he will be right there to help you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so good. Darkness feeds darkness. Mm. It really does. You'll stay stuck in it for forever if you don't ask for help, if you don't ask for Jesus' help and know that while the evil spirits and powers and principalities of the world can be really daunting and scary because there is so much of it. And it's 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 important. It's like a two-sided thing. You have to be aware of it and know it because it is serious. It is dark. It is scary. But at the same time, you have power over all of it. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells within you to deliver you out of all the scary stuff, yes. all the evil, all the darkness. And so call on that. Yeah. And make good decisions. That's that's it too. Like it's it's Jesus will save you and he will take care of you, but you also have to meet him in the middle and it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. And mm. if I'm being honest, I've spent a lot of my life hanging out with God and the demons, mm. partaking with the demons and then going and, and reading the Bible, thinking that how much time I spend with God cancels out the things I do in the darkness. And it doesn't work like that. Yes, I break God's heart when I sin. Yes, I break God's heart when I grieve the Holy Spirit and I disobey, but I'm hurt. It, it breaks his heart because I, he loves me and I'm hurting me. And so I don't want to live like that. I don't want to do things that go against what God wants for me. Yeah, it's the truth. I love seeing you and I's growth because I've seen so much of that with us. We, you guys, we really are growing right with you. We are in this with you. And... It's just funny growing and watching you even and, and just seeing us, we mess up and then we're like, whoa, the conviction and, and how we feel, how yeah. down we feel. Yeah. Watching your growth has been one of the greatest honors of my life. I mean, mm -hmm. Ari, like you're always, you've always been a good person. You've always had a good moral compass. You've always done the right thing. Like you're somebody who does the right thing when no one's looking and you did that whether God was in your life or not. Mm -hmm. 
But now to see, I mean, to see my little girl Ari, the way she, the way she's like, "Uh uh-uh, Angela, that's not right. The way she calls me out, iron sharpening iron. But like, really, I mean, there are times where she'll be like, you know, that's not good. You know, that's a sin. And I'll look at her like, when did you become the sin police? Thank God that you did. But you hold up a mirror to me all the time. Yeah, same with you. And I don't know. I just like. I love you. I love I our love friendship. I love so this podcast. Much. I love these people. I'm your you, lives. You like, are our lives. We love you so much. You know, every time we come on Girls Gone Bible, we're not just like, all right, well, what's the topic for the week? I mean, we pray to God with our whole hearts. God, what do our viewers need? What does the audience need? What, like, specifically, person by person, what can we talk about can, that can hit as many people as possible? I mean, it's not for nothing that we, we, we I don't know, we just, we want to help. We want you to see the truth and the light and receive healing. It's so true. Yeah. I And I, I, I hope we're doing that, guys. <laughs> I know, me too. I really hope. We love you so much, we guys. We love you so much. Are we done? I think we're done, yeah. Wow. Uh, went by so fast. I pray in the name of Jesus yes. that you guys have an incredible weekend, a safe weekend. Yeah. May Jesus be with you every step of the way. I plead the blood of Jesus over your minds, over your bodies, over your spirits, over everything connected to you, that he goes before you, that he has your back and he protects your sides. Just be careful. And one more thing. We always talk about this, but scripture is so important. I had no idea about scripture. And the minute I started speaking scripture over our minds and our hearts and our lives, whenever we're in trouble or we need it or we just need uh, affirmations, you speak that scripture. Find your favorite, find your favorite scripture that speaks to you and declare it over your mind, body and soul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and exactly. it's going to protect you. God's word is the armor and it's going to protect you. Yeah. I love we love you. you guys so much. I love you so much. And I love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace, peace. and safety and protection. You're covered. You're good. Go and in health. peace. And so much health. Mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. We love you. 